Yes, so let us start. I'm Till Kampeter. I'm leading the open printing project. I do it already since mid-2000. Open printing actually founded in 2001. And I'm, I'm at Canonical, somehow one must, uh, and, but at Canonical, my job is to make printing just work, to manage open printing and to package also printing stuff for Ubuntu. You know, Ubuntu, the, the nice orange booth with the charming people in Hall E, uh, like Mao, for example, here. And so now I will tell how it started with open printing and what we are doing now and so on. Oh, he's not here then. So, what we are doing, we are, we are doing everything so that to make printing just work. We are designing the architecture, the basic architecture of the printing stack in Linux. And especially the, the original author of CUPS, Michael Sweet, is also part of open printing. Since he, has, since he has left Apple, we have moved the, the CUPS upstream project also into open printing. And we are, we are very, very closely working together with the printer working group, PWG. This is a, a consortium of printer manufacturers and large software companies who work together to develop standards concerning printing and the most important of them is the, is the IPP, the Internet Printing Protocol, and this is also the standard on which the printing system CUPS is based, the printing system which we use for in free software, and it is also the, the protocol on which driverless printing is based. Printer, which you nowadays buy, they work without a printer driver. You can print with a, with a smartphone, iPhone, or Android on it. And this is driverless IPP printing. And so this is also the internet printing protocol. And we implement these standards as op at open printing, we in implement the standards of the printer working group for, uh, for Linux and free software in general. And as I said, the most important, the driver, yeah, we, we also will have, we also are working on implementing driverless scanning. As the, the, if you have a driverless printer, modern printer which talks IPP for printing, it usually, understands ESCL for scanning or WSD for scanning. So it has a standardized scanning protocol. These two are supported by SANE. So we have a driverless scanning and we are also developing on the support of that so that we have the complete support for multifunction devices. And also we we integrate, we integrate the we integrate the printing support in the desktop environment. We, we take care that the printer setup tools, which are in the GNOME Control Center and in the KDE uh, Print Manager (KDE Settings), that they work with the current cups, and they will work and so also work with the cups in the future, because. There are changes, I will talk about them later, and we, we are naturally taking care that everything works together and integrates well with the Linux distributions, with the desktop environments and applications, so that printing just works. And, and what we also do, we have compatibility lists for for the long, long time that, that we exist from two, 2000 on, we have a printer list which printer works with which driver. We still have it because there are many legacy printers 
for which one still needs printer drivers. And we have also a compatibility list, a new compatibility list, which is maintained by CUPS author Mike Sweet, which lists all the printers which correctly do, which are certified for driverless IPP printing. So you can easily buy these printers and they just work with Linux and they also just work even with your smartphone. And so you can, by our website, easily find a printer which works with, with Linux. And we are also taking care that we help the distributions with the packaging, especially uh, for Ubuntu, I'm doing the packaging myself together with the maintainer of Debian because Ubuntu uses Debian packages. And the Ubuntu and the Debian packages, they are very similar in printing, most are the same, so that we simply can sync them. And some are a little bit different, so this reduced a lot the packaging uh, work. And we, we also have Zdenek Dohnal at Open Printing, who takes care of RPM packages. He works at Red Hat. And I'm also maintaining snap packages of CUPS and of printer applications. Printer applications are printer drivers. So that we are supporting several package formats. We are also starting to support OCI container images. And and also, we are closely working together with manufacturers, especially in the time where every printer needs a driver. I, had, I was in contact with many manufacturers and helped them to get drivers made in the correct, in the correct format, in the, uh, in the correct design, so that they work well with cups. This is not that much needed anymore due to the driverless IPP printing. And one thing, how it all began. I, in, in the late 90s, I've done a PhD in physics, in theoretical physics. And during this PhD time, I was a system administrator for the department, and we had Unix machines, SGI and digital, and then I had to add as my first step also Linux, so that everyone has a, a, an access to the compute, computer network in their office, Linux PC. And first distro which I installed was SUSE 5.1, 1997. And, and in the network there were also printers. And between 1991 when, when Linux was born and 2001 we had 10 dark years of LPD, line printer daemon. And you know, line printer is a text-only printer. If, if you are old enough, line printer is a text-only printer which was used in, in data centers to print lists, to print programs and so, Sim simply plain text. And the LPD was made for that. And therefore, the LPD did not have all these fancy settings and options for trace and resolution and, and, and so on. And our laser printers, there were postscript printers, which had much more functionality. And so there was some scripting effort of my predecessors of system administrators so that one could somehow control the, the two trays and the duplex unit of the printers, but not more. But this worked, this somehow worked. And in 2000, it was already the end of my PhD time, Michael Sweet was uh, issuing the first, was releasing the, the 1.0 of CUPS, the common Unix printing system. It was an IPP-based printing system. And so, and one special thing it had also, it supports it supported PostScript printer description files, PPD files, files which contain the properties of PostScript printers and come with a PostScript printer as part of the Windows and Mac drivers. And so one could easily, with CUPS, access all the functionality of a PostScript printer. And CUPS contain also some filters so that you could also print with PCL printers with CUPS. And so it was a nice way 
to make the printer working better. I have I have deployed it in the network, so one could access all the functionality of printers, especially also of a color laser printer, where, we, where you could also print on co in color and on transparencies and so on. Transparencies are transparent plastic sheets where you print on to put on a projector for those who, who, are, who are of a younger generation. And so I... I uh, and, and so I've put it in our network. One could access everything from the printer, but only by command line. So I have, so I have added, I have created a print dialog, a graphical utility, which you call instead of the LPR command, which shows a list of all printers. You choose a printer, you then it shows the option settings for the printer, so you can choose trays and paper types and resolutions and so. And then you click on print and the file gets printed. And with this, I've, with this, I got, the, I, I have not only used it in our network, I've published it via FreshMeet. This was uh, in, 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 in that time the way how one announced free software pro pro projects. And I got discovered by a person who, who already uh, who wrote articles for a German magazine. And this person, Kurt Pfeifler, he invited me to the Linux talk. It was a, a, a large conference like this one with with booths and talks and so on. And on the booth of the company where he is working, I could show on one PC my print dialog. And this was the interest of Mandrakesoft, later, later Mandriva. It was a, a French company who made a Linux distribution, which should be easy to install and easy to use for end users. So a similar motivation as, as the motivation of Ubuntu. And this was in July 2000, beginning of July 2000. I got invited by this company to work with them. And so one month later, 1st of August, I lived in Paris. And and so I lived in Paris. I, li I worked for Man Ma Mandrake Soft a total of six years in Paris, but don't try to speak French to me. And there, my first, my first task was to uh, switch Mandrake Linux from LPD to CUPS. And so I, I did uh, I, I did not have on I did not only package cups in an RPM package. It is RPM based. This distro is it's uh, it's derived from Red Hat, and I had also to take care that all the drivers for LPD work also with cups, which means that for all drivers, uh, I, I needed to 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 create PPD files, and this would be a lot of work to do it by hand. But there was a a website named linuxprinting.org with a database of printers and scripting to generate PPD files, but the database was not completely populated, so only for a few drivers it generated PPD files. So I asked the author whether he can fill in the other drivers too, but he did not have much time, so he gave me full write access to the database, so I filled it in, and so I, I succeeded to make CUPS working in a way that no, no functionality get, got lost, that all the drivers which worked before continue to work in, in, in Mandrake Linux in the autumn of 2000. And so this was the first distro with CUPS. I don't remember the version number of it. And then I did not I did not only maintain this CUPS in Mandrake Linux, I went to conferences and talk, give, gave talks about CUPS, even full day workshops, interactive workshops to learn how to set up CUPS servers. And I also started every year on the Linux talk on this big conference where I got discovered. On the Linux talk, every year I, I, I uh, 
uh, I created, I managed a community booth about open printing. And so this made cups visible and this made all the other distros follow. And so all the other distros are also using cups and they are also making use of the scripting for, for, uh, for generating the PPD files. And so cups got the standard. And in 2001, I founded with some other people open printing. In the beginning, we were only working on APIs, which in the end did not get made use of. But from 2006 on, I was, I was, uh, I, in 2006, I have, in 2006, I have created, I, I have organized the first open printing summit. I have get, got three, something like 30 or 40 people together to one place to the RICO, RICO offices in, in Atlanta, in Georgia. And so we have discussed about the further development of printing in, in free software and Linux. And there were men, Mike Sweet and a, a lot of people who had to do with printing have made printer drivers and also Patrick Powell who did LPNG, this does not exist anymore nowadays. And so there were many people and there was also one of the two founders of Debian, Ian Murdoch, therefore the Ian in the end of Debian. And I had one problem. The printer database with the PPD generator was running in the living room of its original author, but was already carrying PPD files of manufacturers. And they, that's not correct. An official server needs to be in a data center. So I've asked Jan whether he was in the Free Standards Group, whether the Free Standards Group could, could give me a, a, a server for the database. And he did not only give, gave, gave me the server for the database, he gave me also a full-time employment at the Free Standards Group to manage open printing. Which means, I, once I was out of this always sinking ship of, of Mandrake Soft, which never gave me a raise because they were always nearly breaking down, hopping from one uh, uh, venture capitalist to the next one. They actually sunk only for, uh, 2015. And I could freely move. I could leave Paris. I was working remotely, remotely for the free, free standards group, so I could freely move and could leave Paris. <laughs> and in the same year, on the Linux tag, when I had my booth there, I bumped into Mark Shuttleworth. And he, saw, he told me, thank you very much for your great work on printing. Do you want to work for us? And so I ended up working full time for the Free Standards Group and a third time for Canonical for packaging, uh, uh, printing stuff for Ubuntu. And so I, I, I was well served. I could leave Mandrake Soft and I could work full time on open printing. And I was working totally remotely. So I, I moved at first to Portugal because my wife had a PhD there and after that to Berlin. And, and so my work got straight on the same thing which I did in the first six years with the only difference that I do, did not, that I did not RPMize printing stuff for, for Mandrake soft, but Debianize it for Ubuntu. And
Yes. Where? Yes, I did not advance the slides. I've <laughs> simply told about all the stuff. One thing is also, I'm, due to all this, I'm also a fellow of the Linux Foundation, one of the eight fellows. You know, probably every one of you knows the first of the eight fellows. And, and so, they are not all kernel space. <laughs> so, And from then on, from 2006 on, I organized annual open printing summits to, uh, to meet once a year with uh, important people in, ter in terms of printing. In the beginning, co-located co with the Linux Foundation, later on co-located with the Printer Working Group. And in the recent times, as the people of the Printer Working Group are all from big companies, and big companies, the most big companies uh, do not have much travel budget. And so currently, these uh, annual meetings are always all, all online and not in person anymore. But they are there. And also, one, one very important point. You know that printing is not very sexy. It's, uh, it's very difficult to find volunteers for it. It's much easier, for example, to find volunteers for GNOME, for KDE, for gaming or so, but for printing, it's a piece of infrastructure. It's like a wastewater system. And so, I started to participate mentoring in the Google Summer of Code. I applied as mentoring organization, but not with open printing, with the Linux Foundation as mentoring organization. So other parts of the Linux Foundation were also mentoring uh, Google Summer of Code contributors. And I was mentoring Google Summer of Code contributors for open printing to get more people into open printing. But in the beginning, I did not get very um, many because People do not easily step up between the hundreds of, of mentoring organizations to choose the offers, to choose the project ideas of open printing. And so, and later on, it could, so I got some, some students every year, two or three, once only one. But in 2015, uh, uh, Avik Bazu from Lexmark who worked at Lexmark India was joining open printing. I was meeting him on an, an, on an annual printing summit. And he was in 2015, this was in 2015, he was reaching out to Indian universities and asking around, finding students who, are, who were interested in doing Google Summer of Code. And with this one, he found every, every year many, more than 100 or so, and, and collected their CVs and selected the best one of, the, of those ones, the most suitable ones. And so I had something like six, seven every year. So much better, much better to work with. And so we were good friends. He was working this way together with me managing Google Summer of Code and, fi and, and, and finding uh, students. And it even ended up later on that he did once uh, a meetup in the, in the IIT in Indian Institute of Technology, Mandi, and in an, an afternoon telling about open printing and attracting students in 2019, and after the pandemic, he, t he told we should do such a meetup again. But then he was also, he was not working at Lexmark anymore. He was but volunteering for open printing. And then he also uh, was ambassador for Ze Zephyr. And then we were talking a little bit, a bit about that. We could go beyond open printing to make the meeting, the meetup more interactive. And this 
led that we created a conference, the Opportunity Open Source. We ran last year the Opportunity Open Source in the IIT Mundi, and it was about everything with free software. We did a call for proposals. We had something like 20 talks or so, and, and so we had a little conference, and this helped also really to attract students. We were in the in a university, we attracted students. And so this year I had 11 Google Summer of Code students for open printing. And therefore we continue it annually now. Two weeks ago, we ran it in, in IIT Kanpur, Institute of Indian Institute of Technology Kanpur. And there we had 50 talks in three rooms and we had several hundred attendees. And so we had a nice, a, a nice conference and attracting many people. And we had also nice organizer students from the IIT Kanpur for the on location organization. We, we even raised $10,000 of, uh, of uh, sponsor, sponsor funding. So we could do a very nice conference dinner for all the attendees and so. And, and so next year we will do, we will do again an opportunity open source. So who has contacts in India or who is from India, who is, who is studying or working at an Indian university, Indian Institute of Technology or so, I'm open for bids. And so we will, so, and, and with all this, you see, CUPS got the standard printing system, and also other things changed. In the for, in, in former times, in in the in the nineties and in the two thousands, the standard format for print jobs for an application sending a print job to the printing system in in Linux and Unix was PostScript, because. In the late 90s, the more sophisticated laser printers were PostScript printers. And, but PostScript has limitations. Once PostScript is a two-wing complete programming language, which means you could, in, you could inject malware by PostScript. There, you know, uh, you, you, you could, for example, write a PostScript program you print it, you send it to the printer. It prints a chessboard in, this, in the starting location. Then on the printer, on the front panel of the printer, you enter your move and then you play chess with the printer. Uh, but you could also uh, make a program which is some malware. And so, and another thing is, PostScript is a very old format for printable content, and it is missing some modern aspects. For example, it does not support transparency. And so in 2006, Mike Sweet and, Mike Sweet and me told on my first open printing summit, now we switch the standard to PDF. And since then, I organized the work in Linux that the standard actually gets changed to PDF, that the CUPS filters were made for a PDF-based printing workflow. And also, I talked with, uh, with the people from the GUIs and from the applications that the applications should emit PDF to the printing system. And so with the time, with the years, we got a transition to PDF as the standard print format. And especially in 2011, when I got the control of the CUPS filters, CUPS was since 2005, 2000, I think 2007, until 2019, it was ma maintained by, by Apple and Mike Sweet was an uh, uh, employee of Apple. And so, and Apple was not using the free software print filters, they used proprietary core graphics print filters. And so in 2011, they said, we do not maintain the filters anymore and transferred them to open printing. So I continued maintaining them. And then I switched them officially over to the PDF printing workflow. 
And so we, the standard has actually changed. And I have done many other things. There was also GoScript. GoScript was under proprietary license, and only one year after release, it got changed in uh, it got a free license so the free version was always one year old and the ghost script did, did not contain a uh, output device to convert postscript ghost script is a postscript interpreter it takes postscript as input and turns it in, into any other printable or displayable format so that you can print or display postscript files and modern GoScript also accepts PDF and PCL as input. And so we had, so we have, uh, so we have GoScript, and then Michael Sweet, he needed a GoScript which, which outputs the CAPS raster output format, because this would be the input format. It's an, a universal device independent raster format created by Michael Sweet. And this it was needed for Mike's filters, which are drivers for CUPS drivers for PCL printers and other printers. So Michael Sweet ha ha had his own fork of CUPS, and this was a, uh, his own fork of GoScript, and this was the GoScript needed for CUPS. And then there were so two GoScripts, and then there were also many printer drivers which you had to compile into GoScript. And so it was a nightmare for a distro maintainer to maintain the GoScript packages of the distro. And I was one of these distro maintainers for Mandrake Linux in, in that time. And so in 2007, the upstream of, of GoScript, it's nowadays Artifacts, I think they, they, their name was Aladdin Enterprises that time, they decided to make the newest version of GoScript free software. And with this, I, this, I worked with them together to make a grand unified GoScript, to merge Mike's GoScript into the official GoScript and also to merge in all these, all these third-party drivers which uh, the distros had to, to add as patches and so to make it very easy for distros that they take the official GoScript and it does it all and this I did in 2007 and since then it was easy to maintain GoScript in a distro because GoScript did it all. And one thing also, the CUPS raster format I men mentioned by Mike Sweet for having a device independent raster format, which one can use as input format for, for printer drivers, this turned into the Apple raster format used by AirPrint and also into the PWG raster format used by other driverless printing protocol, uh, driverless printing protocol flavors like Mopria. And so this format got also the base for the new standards. And also when I started at when I was working at Mandrake Soft, I was maintaining also the printer setup tool Printer Drake and put a lot of sophistication in it that it automatically assigned drivers to printers. And so for users, printers got set up automatically so that printing that just works. And therefore, and then when to, I to, in 2006 switched to Canonical to maintain the Ubuntu, then I wanted to overtake Printer Drake, but they did not like that very much. They wanted to use System Config Printer, and this made me then, in System Config Printer, add the functionality that drivers are fully automatically assigned with printers, and so that printers are set up fully automatically. And this is what, and, and 
later on system config printer has split off these algorithms into a debug service and nowadays all printer setup tools, the one of KDE and GNOME, use these algorithms of system config printer to assign drivers to printers. So there's only one instance, one algorithm which does this assignment which I've added to system config printer. And so, and I also mentioned I've packaged and helped packaging, and we at Open Printing up are, are doing packaging, and I have made a snap package of cups, which was not easy. It took me five years because I had to work a lot with the snap team of Canonical, because. A lot, there needed to be many things added to SnapD. They were always over, over, over flooded with work because others needed also new features in, in SnapD. And so it took that long. I started 2017, mm -hmm. Snap was rather new. And something like 2023, I had a fully working cup Snap. But now we have the cup snap, an official cup snap on open printing. It's hosted on open printing, not at Canonical or Ubuntu. We have also snaps of printer applications, which are printer drivers. So print, we have a full printing stack in snaps. And very, very important is also, 20 years ago, I made, I'd have taken care that all printer drivers which worked with LPD work also with CUPS by generating the PPD files. And now, we're in, in the near future, CUPS 3.x will drop the support for PPD files. It will go all IPP. It will support only driverless printers. I will talk later about that. And therefore, the printer drivers needed, need to be changed in a, into a new format again, into printer applications, which are emulations of driverless printers. And I've done all this already, so that all the printer drivers which worked before with CUPS, now work with CUPS 2.x, with the current CUPS, will continue to work in the future with CUPS 3.x, which does not support PPDs anymore. So, you see, we are maintaining CUPS. We are maintaining CUPS filters. These are all the filters needed by CUPS to co convert data formats so that you can print different data formats, that, that you can prepare the data for a printer driver which takes a certain input format. Then I'm also taking care in open printing of the so-called common print dialog backends. You know that you have a print dialog, and usually you think it talks directly with CUPS. This is the case currently. But it has one bad thing. If CUPS does a major change, suddenly all the print dialogs do not work anymore. And the, the GUI project have, have a certain inertia, and they have not much motivation to, to do maintenance on their print dialogs. And so, I want that this does not happen, that when CUPS does major changes, that the print dialogs continue to work. And also, there can appear cloud printing services. We had it already some years ago, there was Google Cloud Print, but they can appear again. What was that? And... And so, so I, I, I have decoupled it. I've made a D-bus connection between the print dialog and, and a backend, one for CUPS, others for cloud printing services, so that the backend needs, to, only the backend needs to be maintained and updated to a new CUPS or new backend added for cloud printing service, and then the print dialog support it automatically, and this is in under development, but in a year and half a year or so, we will have it. Yes, I get. Yes, and one 
important thing is we get soon cups 3.x and it does not support ppd files anymore and this means we cannot have printer drivers anymore this on the left side is cups as it is currently to to talk with a printer when cups started one had a PPD file, it described the properties of the printer and it told also which filter executable is turning a known format and it also which known format into the format which the printer needs. And so, or for a postscript printer, it's just a PPD file without this information which, needs the, which means the printer's postscript. And so, CUPS knows which filters to call to turn the input format into the format needed by the printer driver. And so we have driver filters and we have PPD files. And with this, the input formats, usual P, usually PDF, but also images or postscript, can be printed on a supported printer. But as we, but there are also driverless printers here yeah, ipp everywhere is one one uh, way to call uh, driverless ipp printers and if you have a driverless printer cups can directly talk with it and in the future we will not support ppd files anymore but we have still the old printers and to support them is we have a cups which supports the driverless printers we create printer applications. This is a daemon, which on one end, on its front end, emulates in software driverless printer, and on the other side, connects with the printer and internally has the driver code to, to, uh, to, to turn the job in what the printer needs. And and the printer application knows the capabilities of the printer, so it can answer an IPP request for the capabilities of the printer. And so we can print in, with the CUPS, which does not support PPD files, and only driverless printers, we can print also on, on uh, legacy printers, which need a, need a driver. And as the current CUPS already supports uh, driverless printers. You can choose whether you use classic drivers or printer application. The current CUPS supports both. And this is also nice for the desktop integration. We simply add the functionality for the new architecture, but do not remove for the old architecture. And it works then perfectly with, two, with the two versions of CUPS. And yes, but one thing is for the, new, the printer setup tools and print dialogues as we have them currently, they support only the old way, way with PPD files and not the new way with printer applications and, and driverless printers. And therefore we have to do a lot of work. We have to do desktop integration. We have to uh, adapt the printer setup tools to update them to support also to assign printer applications in, instead of classic drivers to printers. And also to list driverless IPP printers, which are just available and do not even need a CUPS queue. And the printer, print dialogues, they have also to list driverless printers without a CUPS queue. And so this needs also to be changed, but for the printer dialogues, we simply change them that they support the common print dialogues backends, which I have mentioned. And the backend, we have already updated so that it supports the driverless printers. And this is all in the works. It's massively worked on it by my by my student, by most of my 11 students this year, and last year there there have already students worked on it. So mid 2025 we will get, get CUPS 3.x. We will get the 
it will then be released, and we want that the distros adopt it, that Ubuntu 25.10, for example, uses CUPS 3.x, and therefore we need to complete this desktop integration. And therefore, I'm really a lot in contact with all the desktop and application people and have, uh, have set up the appropriate Google Summer of Code projects that Google Summer of Code contributors are doing the work of the, of the adaptation and updating. And another thing is I've talked about uh, printer applications. The same way we can also make scanner applications. We can emulate a driverless scanner and pack a scanner driver into the scanner application. For example, we can pack SANE into a scanner application. And so the interface between the, the scan client, any GUI application which scans, and the scanner driver will be ESCL and not SANE anymore. And this, as this is a network protocol, we can put the client, both for printing and scanning, into one sandbox package, a snap or so, and the driver can be in another sandbox package. And so we can have drivers for printers and scanners or for multifunction devices in sandbox packages, and this means we can provide drivers for Im immutable distributions which is very important. We get more and more immutable distributions and we need to have the possibilities that manufacturers can publish drivers and they work with immutable distributions. And the sandbox packages are distribution independent. The manufacturer makes one driver package and it works with all immutable distributions and also with the classic distributions. So they do not have the burden to test it for tens and more distributions and each version of them and so on. And so this probably motivates manufacturers more to make Linux drivers. Yes, so this I will skip. And we have something, something, some other interesting thing, you know, I told you in Linux, we get with CUPS 3.x, we get all IPP. We will do the same thing. Uh, no, no. Microsoft will do the same thing with Windows. They want to go, they call it Windows Protected Print. They want to make printing all IPP to do away with printer drivers because at Microsoft, printer drivers at Windows, printer drivers are deeply in the system. They are even kernel drivers. And they are closed source from the manufacturers. Even Microsoft does not have access to the source. And so they put completely unknown code into their kernel, into their deep system. This often leads to crashes and instability and, my, and, and security problems, and Microsoft wants to do away with it. So they say, throw your old printer away. We support only driverless printers, and we go all IPP. But Microsoft will not use CUPS. They want to use Mopria. So it's not that everything will go through open printing. And so, Windows will sooner or later be all IPP and not have printer drivers anymore. But I can tell you, you don't need to throw away your printer because we have WSL. So under WSL, you install printer, printer applications. They are in the Snap Store. You can simply install them as Snaps. There are four printer applications for all the 10,000 printers which, which are supported under Linux. And so if you install the printer application, which is for your printer, you uh, set up the printer and the printer application, and then Windows shows the icon of your printer, and you can print under Windows. And this for many, many years. So you don't throw away the printer you will disappoint the manufacturer a little bit because they cannot sell a new printer to you, but we are sustainable.
And on the Open Printing website, on the front page, you see several icons, and one is Windows. And so if one of your loved ones says Windows, and by a Windows update, their printer does not work anymore, there's a how-to, and there's described how, how one saves this old printer. And one thing naturally is, I need people, I need many people, to contribute, not only for the coding, but also for the, for the documentation, for CI test development, and so on. And so, I hope that several people got interested. You can contact me, and we can, and, and See our, our GitHub, github.com slash openprinting, our projects, and every help is welcome. We are also every year participating in the Google Summer of Code. So if you are starting into, into a free software, or if you are a student, you can participate in the open printing, in the Google Summer of Code with, uh, for, for open printing and help us join our community and make printing better and make printing just work. So, are there any questions? No? No questions? No questions? Where? Yeah, I was just curious how many printers you have personally that you have to test. And Currently, I have only two, but in some time when the HPLIP driver, HP3 software printer driver, was still uh, maintained by an American HP team. This team has, had given me $10,000 a year for test printers. So I had always something like 10 printers or so. But, this, but unfortunately, they have outsourced several years ago already to India. And this team is not that cooperative. And since then, an old printer, which simply listens on port 9100, one can create a small C program which, which uh, listens on port 9100. I have even made such, uh, got such a C program when Hello. I did a workshop for making snaps of daemons to excuse have a very simple uh, daemon me? for, for so telling the people that's how to... So I the time for next session. Yes, yes. So thank you very much. I hope you liked it all.